Hi folks, it's, where are you? There, is that, is it there? It's there. How are you doing? It's David Connolly here. I wanted to do a quick video, 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 on how to learn any web development technology. And the reason why I have this fabulous 1979 PVT60 here, the greatest guitar ever made by the way, is to demonstrate something because there's a common thread believe it or not, between playing the guitar and web development. Let me explain the vibe, right? I have played the guitar since I was about 11 or 12 years old. And when you tell people that, they think you must be some great guitarist. But no, all my life, all my adult years, my fingers were never fast enough to play the things I wanted to play. And so I spent the best part of 30 years playing Johnny Be Good <laughs> and badly, right? So it was like, I'm not plugged in, right? But it was like, and you can hear my fingers are already tripping up, right? And I was in a couple of bands and I really wanted to be able to do the good stuff, you know, the, the, the fancy stuff, and I could not do it. And then a couple of years ago, I stumbled upon a few tips just randomly on YouTube actually and one of them was to get rid of the bendy plectrum and change to one that's rock solid. This is actually a, a, a very hard plectrum and it has a point on it. That was tip number one. Uh, tip number two was to play at an angle Instead of like this, play at an angle, either either out the way or up the way, right? And that was another tip. And lastly, uh, try not to do this, right? That was it. Three simple tips. Now, let me tell you folks, I spent years going through scales like... And I couldn't... As a 19-year-old, I used to spend hours and hours and hours doing this. And I could never get faster. I tried metronomes and everything, like... And you can hear my, my fingers are still tripping up. I couldn't do it, right? But then when I picked up those tips, one day I picked up my guitar. It was actually the night of Brexit, funnily enough, because I had the thing, I was watching the Brexit vote live, and I was just sitting, and suddenly my fingers just went. And that was awful, but you get the idea, right? And suddenly I was able to play uh, all of the fast, cool stuff that I'd been wanting to do for years, you know? I mean, I'm not great, but, but, you know. You get the idea. If that was amplified, you'd be really impressed. Anyway, <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, it was just a, a few little simple tips and I almost felt like phoning up the folks from the band from 20 odd years ago and saying, hey, come back, you know, because I had now finally figured out how to play the, the cool stuff, like Europe, you know? All right. Anyway, turns out web development is exactly the same with just a few very, very simple principles. You can learn any web development technology. This is something that I only figured out uh, November 2016. For a long, long time, I was a Codeigniter developer and it was all I knew and I was good at it, but I was a slow learner and I could not learn things, you know? But then uh, I stumbled upon these here tips and uh, how I stumbled upon them is a whole different story. But I'm just gonna lay them on you right now and I'm gonna tell you how you can easily learn any web development technology, okay? Here are the rules, okay? The first rule is never go to a discussion forum or a chat room for help, okay? Just never ever do it. I've tried it and time after time, it's just a bad vibe. People seem to think it's okay to go and ask people to just go and read the user guide. There's a lot of egos and whatnot. 
And I think that stuff like that is bound to lower your self-esteem. And it's just not cool, you know? The whole thing's just not cool. So rule number one is don't go to any forums or chat rooms if you have any problems. I'm very serious about that. Um, and I'll tell you where to go when you experience a problem in just a minute. The next rule, this is how to learn any web development technology. The next rule is you need to go slow, slow. Do you hear me, people? Slow. I know you want me to talk quicker. Well, I'm not going to talk quicker because you need to go slow. You know, I've just spent, I'll give you an idea of what slow means. I've just spent, uh, what time is it? Okay, I've just spent 13 hours going through two videos. One was 10 minutes, one was 15 minutes. So a 25 minute video has taken, taken me 13 hours to go through. If you see a course, um, take for example the Angular one I'm doing, where I'm doing one minute videos. Just because the videos are one minute doesn't mean that you should be, you know, doing 10 videos in 10 minutes. You should be going really, really, really slow. The slower, the better. Use that little speed adjustment thing. It's on Udemy, it's on YouTube, it's everywhere. And slow those videos down. When I'm watching videos, tutorials, I'm at half speed, okay? So get into the habit of going really, really slow. That alone is going to be a great help, okay? Now, next. Um, when you have something, this is kind of obvious, right? But it's, it's kind of solid and you probably don't do this. When you have a situation where you go through a tutorial, right? And then you hit run or compile or whatever and there's an error and you start freaking out, okay? Don't freak out. What you need to do is go back to before there was an error and save it. I use Git and I'm uploading. It's like climbing a wall, like an ice face with those little picks, one inch at a time, right? And when you have it working, you save it and chuck it on to a uh, bit bucket so it's stored. Now, if you have a problem with something, some fault, some error, then you need to break it down into the tiniest possible components. For example, if somebody says, okay, I'm going to show you how to uh, import an RxJS observable and have it reading an HTTP GET request. It's quite a lot, right? And it involves tweaking lots of files and stuff. What you want to do is literally write one line of code, save it, test it. Did you get any errors? Okay, good, move on. Next line, write it, save it, test it, okay? Very, very slow, very meticulous. Slow is good. Next tip, become very serious about taking notes. Now, when you take notes, don't take crappy notes as if you were at a university lecture and you're kind of like, oh, sorry, right? Work on the assumption that you may never look at this technology again for three years. And the question is, if you came back to this technology in three years' time and you looked at the notes, would you be able to pick this up? So, again, it's another golden tip. Get very, very serious about note-taking and you need an online note-taking app. A lot of people use uh, Gists. Uh, is that what they're called? Gists or Gists? And I, I use them for a while, but I don't anymore. These days I'm using Google Keep because it can store links and stuff and it's just it has a better search facility than Gists. Now, I don't care what app you use. doesn't really matter, but make sure it's online. And when you do learn something, stop and take notes, take really, really good notes, okay? And there's that, okay? Next tip, this is huge, and this is quite possibly the greatest tip of the whole lot, okay? Never learn from just one source. So let's supposing you're planning on learning framework X, okay, whatever it may be, don't just buy a Udemy course and go through that and say, well, that's me, I've got it. You want to have, make this the policy, right? Before you can declare something as known, you need to go through at least three courses 
from three different people. For some reason, that's difficult for me to say, but you need to go through three of them, okay? Um, I've done more Code Igniter tutorials than anybody on the planet Earth, but if somebody was planning on learning Code Igniter, I would say, look, my stuff is not enough. You need at least two others. So remember that, okay? You will always get different flavors from different tutors. And when you go around, the standard is three different courses. That's gonna give you a really full picture, okay? So there's just a couple of other tips I'm gonna give you, which are really, uh, I think, awesome. I'm so, I love talking about this because it's good information. The other um, tips I've got are, if you run into problems understanding something, and it's, let's say it's a video, right? You've got videos and books and web pages, right? If it's a video, and you've really, really got problems, and you've gone through it a few times, and it just makes no sense, and you're really, really struggling, what you want to do, folks, is switch it on to normal speed, right? This is where we go away from slow, and sit back, and relax, right? And just kind of zone out and watch the video. But this time, as you play the video back, don't try and follow the code or follow what the guy is saying. Don't even think. Just focus on the tone of the speaker, right? This is a really, really golden insider tip. I should be charging for this. But I discovered this one night. I had taken modafinil <laughs> and I, I took this really difficult course on Udemy and I had no clue what was going on and I whacked a modafinil at five in the morning and I still had no clue and after about 15 minutes I became aware of the tone of the guy's voice. I became aware that there were certain words that were being emphasised, certain bits that were being kind of brushed over and when you just listen to the voice and listen to the parts that have the emphasis, you know? So if I say something like, um, okay, so if you'd like to uh, make a cup of tea and you want it to be good tea, then you really need to make sure that you use fresh milk. You're also going to need some sugar and some blah, blah, blah. Okay, did you see how I emphasized the fresh milk? Become attuned to this vibe of being able to tune in to the tone of the speaker's voice because that will tell you what the important stuff is and you will discover that you can filter out 90% of what they're saying and just focus on the important stuff, okay? Now, as far as the web goes, um, I've, I've pretty much stopped reading books, by the way, but as far as the web goes, for training at least, get a highlighting app, okay? There are a few you can pick up for free. There's one in the uh, Google Chrome store. It's a Chrome extension. I'll, uh, I'll give you the link in the description. And when you're going through documentation or anything written, use your highlighter pen and highlight those important sentences. Again, go slow. Now, finally, if all of that fails and you still have problems, remember you're not allowed to go to forums or chat rooms, it's just gonna depress you and lower your self-esteem. So if all else fails, DC's golden tip is this, you need to start making friends with some really, really good developers. So one of the ways that I, I do this, I've never spoken about it here, but here's the big reveal. When I'm going through a course on Udemy or something like that, I'll usually get in touch with the instructor early on and I'll, I'll ask them some stupid question, but it'll normally be out with Udemy, maybe through Twitter or email or something. And I'll ask them a fairly simple question and then I'll insist on paying them $10 for the answer, right? Now, you know, the Udemy instructors, they don't need $10 but I'm going to be insisting, look, I'll give you $10. Now, it's a simple question, you know, why do you use a semicolon? I don't know, but I'm giving them $10 via PayPal for it. And when you do that, 
you end up very, very quickly at the top of the friends list, you know? And I've got Udemy instructors. I've never spoken about this before. But I've got Udemy instructors who I can contact at any time at all. And if I run into a problem, I can just say, hey, Charlie, how'd you do this, that, that? And let me tell you something. Not only are they really glad to see me and really happy, but half the time they write the code. They'll say, hey, I wrote 400 lines of code. Here you go, you know. And I'll say, no problem. And I'll, I'll always give them a little um, tip. Last week, I... Uh, I paid someone $50, a Udemy instructor, um, for a little problem that I needed solved, but he also gave me some general advice, and it was really useful, it was very valuable to me, and I gave him 50 and he was happy, and I was happy. Now, some of you might think that's a bit mad, kind of throwing money about, but the question is, what is your education worth? What is your time worth? Now, I don't know about you, but... I don't have time to wander about the web for three days trying to solve a problem. So that's why one of my most powerful secret weapons is that little Udemy trick. So I'm contacting them and I'm giving them a little bung and I'm letting them know that if this guy gets in touch, then he is cool and probably worth answering, you know? So that's pretty much it. That is how you can learn any web development technology. Now, I don't know any, no, I don't know everything, but I'm pretty sure that I could pick anything up within two or three months using these techniques. So I hope this is helpful. And if it is, please like and subscribe and all of that stuff. Help a brother out. Everybody in the world has got more subscribers than me. And all they're doing is framework comparisons, you know. So it would really be... Um, a kind of good motivator if I could get a few subscribers this year. My self-esteem needs it. You stay cool. I'll catch you later.